Hi, and welcome to Level Up, where we show you how to solve problems with Google Cloud Platform hands-on. Today I'll be demonstrating a pattern from Jeremy, one of our solution architects based out of the UK. This time we'll be looking at Jeremy's guide for efficiently spinning up and down Kubernetes nodes based on pod requests. We'll use GKE node auto-provisioning along with the optimized utilization profile. This is a recommended setup for running cost-optimized batch jobs. Node auto-provisioning creates new node pools with appropriate CPU and memory to fit our workload. The optimized utilization profile tells the autoscaler to be more aggressive when using nodes, meaning your cluster will try to make the most of existing resources. It also helps avoid over-provisioning and shuts down nodes more quickly than the default policy when usage drops off, optimizing your costs. In cases where you have multiple customers or teams consuming Kubernetes resources, one approach is to use cluster multi-tenancy. For this demo, our tenants will have separate namespaces, service accounts, and network policies, and their jobs are required to run on nodes that explicitly disallow pods from other tenants. Multi-tenancy can be a great way to manage costs, track resource usage, and keep your tenant workloads separated. However, when managing a cluster like this, the administrative overhead of making sure separate resources are available for each tenant when they're needed can really add up. Luckily, the setup using node auto-provisioning and the optimized utilization profile I mentioned earlier can automate away some of these administration tasks while lowering costs at the same time. Definitely a big win-win. Okay, so today we'll be working in Cloud Shell. I'm starting off with the guide's GitHub repository already cloned and all the necessary GCP products enabled. Let's generate the demo container image using the included cloud build configuration file. This is a container that calculates an approximation of the value of pi. It's useful to run as a Kubernetes job that gives us a nice batch process test case when we want to test our auto-provisioning setup. Now we'll set up a service account that can access this container image and make a GKE cluster with the optimized utilization auto-scaling profile and auto-provisioning enabled. This takes a moment, so let me fast forward a bit while this finishes starting up. Next up, we'll create the namespaces, service accounts, and network policies for our two tenants. We're just going to call them Tenant1 and Tenant2 to keep the demo easy to follow. Great. Here's a quick look at our resource YAML file. It runs the pi calculation pod as a Kubernetes job, asking the cluster scheduler to ensure it runs once. This pod needs a half a CPU and a gig of RAM. Let's quickly confirm what happens when we want to run a batch workload that's not tied to one of the tenants. Let me get a couple windows up so we can see what's happening. First, I'll monitor the node pools for our cluster in this window and the nodes in those pools in this one. Here, I'll run commands, and over here, I can monitor the status of my jobs. Here goes. I'll submit the job to the Kubernetes cluster and then watch the job status. Let's speed this up a little bit. Here you can see my job being created, running, and completing successfully. So what happened in these other two windows? This isn't a trick question. The two existing nodes in our cluster had enough resources to run this pod without the need to add more. So the auto-provisioning didn't make any changes to the node pools or the nodes in them. Now that we know what things look like when we don't need to scale up, we'll have an easy time recognizing the action that auto-provisioning takes on our behalf. Let's see what it looks like when we run a job with tenant-specific constraints. Here's our new job spec. Tenant1 now wants to take a crack at calculating pi. You can see there's now a selector and toleration in the spec that requires the cluster scheduler to put this workload on a node that is specifically tagged for tenant1 use only. This is called a taint in Kubernetes. OK, let's submit this job and watch the results. Our job is getting ready to run just like last time, but here you can see that auto-provisioning has spun up a new node pool. What happened is that it recognized that we don't have any nodes in the cluster with the tenant1 taint on them as required by the job. So it made a new pool of nodes with that taint. Also, notice the node pool is created using machine types that fit our job resource needs with only one CPU. If you wait for a second, you'll see that there's a new node in the node pool and it has the tenant1 taint. As we can see here, our job completes successfully, but if I fast forward a little more, we can see that this optimized utilization auto-scaling profile has one more trick up its sleeve. After a short time passed without tenant1 workloads, it noticed that it could save us some money by shutting down the node and deleting the associated empty node pool. Nice. In previous implementations of the auto-scaler, it would have waited much longer before choosing to scale down. Okay, one more test. This time both tenants submitting slightly larger jobs. 
Notice that here, both tenants are requesting an entire CPU for their batch and they need two gigs of RAM each. As you may have expected, the cluster is now home to two new node pools, one for tenant one jobs and the other for tenant two. However, notice that this time the auto provisioning is chosen to make those pools from a larger machine type so that it can handle these larger job resource requests. Same story as before, once everything completes, the cluster will handle removing those resources that we're no longer using. Of course, you can find out more details about how the cluster autoscaler makes decisions about when to remove resources in the full documentation. It's linked in the description below. So now you've seen how to use Kubernetes node pool auto provisioning, along with multi-tenancy in your cluster so that resources are used efficiently and waste is minimized. For more details on how node auto provisioning and the optimized utilization auto scaling configuration works, have a look at the official documentation linked in the description. You can also set up auto provisioning to use preemptible GKE nodes for a larger potential cost savings. Have a look at our previous video about using preemptible machine types with GKE for more details. If you're interested in trying out what you've seen today, head over to the written reference guide, which includes much more detail, links to the official documentation, and even has an example of using GKE tenant workload identities to control access to GCP resources. If you want more details on lowering your GKE costs, we have a much deeper dive in our best practices for running cost-optimized Kubernetes applications guide, linked below, as well as two previous videos about it. And that's all for this episode of Level Up, with special thanks to Jeremy for sharing his demo with us. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, and subscribe and click the bell if you'd like to be notified the next time one of our videos goes live. Thanks, and see you again next time.